take it away. Thank you, thank you, Max. I'm uh, quite happy to to be able to participate uh, at the workshop, but I have to say I'm not that happy not to be able to join for for Mexican food. But anyways, um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna show uh, a case example of how we can uh, use uh, we can use uh, PyCSEP, and um, we we were interested in answering the question of whether uh, regionally calibrated seismicity models are more informative than uh, global models, and we got some insights from uh, California, New Zealand, and Italy. So let's uh, dive in. Um, well, I need to talk first about uh, the motivation to conduct uh, this study. And uh, yeah, basically, um, the increasing availability and quality of uh, geophysical data sets, uh, including earthquake catalogs, uh, geological records, and interseismic strain rates has enabled the creation in present day of regional and global uh, earthquake forecasting models that can underpin um, probabilistic seismic hazard assessments. While uh, regional uh, seismicity models provide uh, detailed earthquake forecast, given the high spatial temporal resolution of the data sets on which they rely, Global models uh, offer greater testability of the large damage in earthquakes uh, due to the more frequent uh, seismic activity observed uh, worldwide. And also global models can be can serve as benchmarks in places where uh, data is um, scarce or uh, local seismic hazard programs are lacking. So in addition to this, um, let's say qualitative uh, comparisons, also quantitative comparisons are uh, important to more uh, rigorously evaluate the performance of global models uh, at, at regional scales, uh, to analyze whether regional models can translate such uh, greater data resolution into more uh, skillful forecasts, or if they uh, actually might be uh, overfitting their training data sets. Uh, to identify areas with uh, large discrepancies that uh, require further investigation and overall to better inform uh, seismic hazard programs. So that's the motivation to conduct uh, this study. As uh, Max uh, mentioned, um, well, CSEP is, uh, is quite uh, suitable for this purpose because as, as Max was mentioning, um, Several uh, regional and global models have been submitted uh, to CSEP for truly prospective uh, evaluation. Um, in this study, I'm going to use some of the of those 40, 400 uh, seismicity models and model um, versions uh, to compare them against a global uh, seismicity forecast. Um, we uh, use like independent data. Uh, because prospective evaluations can only pr prospective evaluations can facilitate an objective uh, comparison between regional and global models that uh, would not be feasible through retrospective testing because uh, regional models may have the advantage of better fitting their regional uh, data sets. Uh, one of the of the models, one of the uh, of the experiments, sorry, was uh, conducted on a global scale by Strader and others in 2018. And uh, she and colleagues um, evaluated the consistency of four um, global Earth time invariant seismicity models against uh, independent observations. They found that a hybrid model, the Gear 1 uh, model, was the most informative. Um, and this model results uh, from the multiplicative uh, log linear combination of smooth seismicity and um, interseismic uh, strain rates. So yeah, by means of, uh, of the t-test, which uh, is based on information gains uh, per earthquakes, uh, per earthquake, they uh, were able to identify uh, the most informative model. So compared uh, with uh, GEAR, some of the regional seismicity models that participated in previous uh, uh, forecast experiments um, depend on parameters that might be better constrained <clears throat> by uh, regional data or on data sets that might that probably will never be available uh, like on a global scale uniformly so we can uh, mention like special variations in b and a values uh, 
um, adaptive smoothing of small seismicity or um, tectonic, geodetic, and fault kinematic data. Um, regarding the, the independent data that we are using, um, we uh, use like um, earthquakes uh, reported between the 1st of January 2014 and the 1st of January 2022 to make this uh, comparison completely uh, prospective, considering that year was calibrated with data up to 2013. Um, in consistency with previous experiments, uh, we use a, a magnitude threshold of 4.95. Uh, this seismicity is uh, confined within the, the first 30 kilometers in California and Italy, and uh, 40 kilometers in New Zealand. Um, so we came up with uh, what the, 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 the Comcat, um, the Geonet, and the Boletino uh, seismic, Seismico Italiano uh, reported 38 target earthquakes in California, including the 2019 uh, Ridgecrest earthquake, 47 earthquakes um, in New Zealand, including the uh, Kaikoura earthquake, magnitude 7.8 and 11 target events in Italy, including the Norcia uh, earthquake that had a magnitude, was a magnitude 6.6. .6. So with this uh, prospective data and forecast, we have all the ingredients to run a prospective experiment. Uh, so of course, the first thing we had to do was to, um, to map the, um, like to project, uh, the magnitude the, the magnitude six earthquake rates provided originally by the by the gear one uh, model onto the CSEP California and New Zealand and Italy uh, testing regions. We assume um, a B value of uh, one to extrapolate such rates on uh, to the uh, magnitude five threshold uh, that is uh, that was uh, used in in previous experiments. And that's the, the way that the forecast uh, looked like. Uh, also, like uh, regarding the, the metrics that, you, that we used, uh, we used a set of uh, consistency and uh, comparative likelihood tests, tests, which are currently implemented already in, in, in PyCSEP. Um, and as Bill was mentioning uh, before, uh, we, we use now uh, different um, likelihood distribution of earthquakes. Uh, traditionally, we were using uh, Poisson, a Poisson distribution. We were assuming that earthquakes in individual cells are independent and Poisson distributed. And we recently introduced uh, this uh, new um, likelihood uh, test, which um, assumes a binary distribution of earthquakes that compared to the Poisson distribution is not computing the probability of observing one, two omega earthquakes in each cell, but rather um, if we have uh, seismicity or no seismicity at all in such places. In this manner, we are able to reduce the, the sensitivity of, uh, of CSEP uh, test results to clustering. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, discuss the, the results now. Um, so regarding the, the comparative test results, which are based on information gains, uh, we see that uh, for California, a model, a regional model that, uh, that adaptively uh, smooths the location of small earthquakes is the most informative during the target period, which uh, has been already uh, documented to be kind of a robust uh, method uh, to forecast seismicity within the period of 15 years in California. In Italy, uh, three models, three regional models are more informative than a year one. Uh, however, um, we see that the MPSO4 after model, which is the, the 2004 official uh, seismicity model that informs the national seismic hazard model can be considered as, as statistically as informative as the global model, which, is, uh, what, which was very surprising. A bit more surprising was the fact that gear in, in New Zealand it was the most informative seismicity model also outperforming the uh, 2002 uh, National Seismic Hazard uh, Model NZHM. 
So when we uh, have a look on what uh, could be explaining these results, we found that uh, by plotting the residuals in spatial uh, likelihood scores obtained by year uh, with respect to the uh, New Zealand HACCP model, um, the, the regional model is uh, performing better than year in the location, in forecasting the location of the main shock of the Karkura sequence as denoted with uh, those uh, red areas. In contrast, uh, GEAR is more informative in forecasting the, the occurrence of those earthquakes that occurred. Um, um, many, many authors uh, are hesitant to call those earthquakes uh, aftershocks of the main shock. Uh, but I'm going to say like aftershocks that were observed immediately after the main shock. Uh, about 170 kilometers away from the main shock. Like in those locations, um, gear is performing better than, uh, than the original model as seen in panel, in panel A. In panel B, I'm uh, plotting also th those residuals, but now uh, like cons considering the seismicity component of gear um, with respect to the uh, consistency in space of the national seismic cassock model, and again, we see that the seismicity model is performing better than the original model in those locations. So it turned out that uh, in 2013, there was a sequence um, of earthquakes in those locations called the Strait uh, Cook uh, sequence, earthquake sequence. And these results indicate that the inclusion of that uh, seismicity information into the seismicity model component of year and in year itself uh, is what might be explained in the results, um, indicating that probably the, um, um, the National Seismic Hazard Model may be uh, overfitted um, to the training data. Also, when analyzing the spatial distribution of uh, the, the spatial component of the models, um, we see interesting uh, things. So on the, on the y-axis, I'm showing uh, Spa spatial joint likelihood scores obtained per earthquake obtained um, by each of these uh, seismicity forecasts. Um, and on the y-axis, I'm showing Gini coefficients. So the, the largest, the Gini coefficient, the more localized the predicted seismicity is and uh, vice, versa, vice versa. So we kind of observe this, uh, this kind of pattern which uh, denotes that like models that provide like either too dispersed or too localized seismicity forecast uh, perform poor, whereas the models that um, use this kind of intermediate uh, smoothing procedures are the most informative, are the most consistent, uh, especially with the observations. Also, if we compare uh, like uh, results between California, New Zealand, and Italy uh, models, we see that the California and, and, and Italy models seem to benefit uh, more from the lack of um, sensitivity to clustering of the binary uh, likelihood test, which is uh, represented on the panel B, which indicates, which um, yeah, which suggests that the target events uh, occurred in a relatively fewer uh, number of cells um, compared to the uh, earthquakes observed in California in New Zealand. Having said this, uh, having said this, I can uh, conclude that uh, one regional model, which adaptively, adaptively uh, smooths the location of small earthquakes, is the most informative model in California. Um, in contrast, one global model is uh, the most informative uh, model in New Zealand, and in Italy, three regional models uh, based on relative earthquake intensities and adapt adaptive smooth uh, seismicity are the most informative. So overall, these results are uh, quite surprising because GEAR is uh, performing relatively well at uh, those uh, regional scales, um, suggesting that maybe um, Gear can be used as uh, a reference model of global uh, intermediate uh, seismicity. When evaluating, when assessing the spatial uh, dimension of the forecast, we identified that models that provide forecasts that are too either too localized or too dispersed uh, perform poorly. 
and uh, that models uh, for New Zealand obtain higher uh, spatial likelihood scores in comparison with models for California and Italy, then noting that uh, the target uh, earthquakes nucleated in relatively uh, fewer cells. So in other words, that seismicity was relatively more uh, localized in, is relatively more localized in New Zealand than in California and Italy. Thank you very much for your attention and yeah, I'm happy to take questions.